Hi everyone, this is Migs from Sneaks and Ball PH and welcome to episode 15 of the Jordan Hunt. Today we have a quick look and review on the Air Jordan 15 Stealth. To start things off, the Jordan 15 is probably the least popular Jordan sneaker in the whole signature line. Because, you know, just look at this, like, it's very, very jarring to say the least. And you know, it was very polarizing then, and it still is until now. This shoe was designed by Tinker Hatfield, who is very well known in the sneaker community as one of the best shoe designers in history. But I think it's safe to say that this wasn't his best work. The Jordan 15 was inspired by the X15 hypersonic jet plane, and that jet plane was all black so you can understand why this stealth colorway of the Jordan 15 is also predominantly black. The Jordan 15 did release in 1999 and sadly Jordan never really got to wear these because he retired after winning his sixth NBA championship in 1998. However after Michael Jordan's retirement they did form this new team Jordan which featured NBA players such as Ray Allen, Michael Finley, and Mike Bibby. They would all go on to wear the Jordan 15s and had their own PEs as well but the most famous player exclusive of the Jordan 15s would probably be Reggie Millers. And it's kind of cool that even though Reggie Miller wasn't part of Team Jordan, he got his own PEs of the Air Jordan 15. He was able to do so probably because he was close friends with Michael Jordan. So you know, being friends with MJ definitely has its perks. Then with that out of the way, let's get into the review. So when I bought the Jordan 15s on the resale market, it did come with a box. However, I probably misplaced it or maybe it got thrown away by someone in the house. But it really wasn't any special box. It was just your typical Jordan sportswear box, which was all black with gold jump and brand. Then just a few quick tech specs on the Jordan 15. For the traction, you do have a fully herringbone outsole. And it seems like the rubber compound on these is pretty good. So with a tacky rubber compound and a herringbone traction pattern, you can't really go wrong. I did try these out at home and they were really grippy. But of course, we will try to test these out on court. Then here on the edges of the outsole, you actually don't have any herringbone there. Instead, what you have is just this flat rubber that has a little bit of texture. And when I first saw this, I was actually quite a bit concerned because, you know, what if you strike at this portion? Will it not stick as well or will you slip or anything? But so far it seems like it's not gonna cause any issues. Then for the cushion, you do have a full length injected Phylon midsole with forefoot and heel zoom air. The injected Phylon is very soft but you can actually just see it here on the midfoot because the foam is caged by this rubber here in the forefoot as well as the heel. You also have that massive heel cup that dips down here at the heel and at first I was concerned that the cushion would feel really clunky because of this but it actually feels really comfortable. The injected Phylon is nice and soft and gives you nice plushness and of course you have that responsiveness and bounce back from the zoom units in the forefoot and the heel so surprisingly enough the cushion on the jordan 15s is actually really really good then for the materials jordan brand actually had some interesting material choices on the jordan 15 so you do have this leather rand that wraps all the way from the toe up to the heel counter and it does feel really nice in hand and is pretty soft as well it also is a nice thick cut which definitely makes it feel more premium the only downside to this is that it flexes pretty weird so if you can see this it kind of flexes in weird zones and I think that's mostly because of this leather rand. Then above that you do have this woven textile that has this Kevlar pattern to it and that definitely ties in well with that whole military grade and fighter jet theme and it does feel pretty awesome because yes it is kind of thick but it's also premium feeling and very soft as well. It was also a first in basketball footwear because of course now this whole woven textile is very very common on basketball shoes but at the time you just had all of these leather based shoes so this was definitely a step towards the future at the time. Then this shoe does have an inner boot and it really is very plush and very soft. So it has this airy mesh outer layer and a puffy neoprene underneath. Then you also have some nylon here on the pull tab as well as this strip that runs down the laces. Then lastly you do have some rubber here on the upper. So here on the toe you do have a strip of rubber and this rubber has this sort of corrugated texture and then you can find that same rubber with that same texture here at the heel cup at the back. This heel cup is definitely very excessive because it pretty much goes from the outsole all the way to the top of the heel. So you know just Wow, this is probably the most exaggerated and beefiest heel counter I've ever seen on any basketball shoe. Then for fit and sizing, I did go through to size with the Jordan 15 and it fits me pretty well. 
and the lacing system is actually pretty narrow so when you really cinch down your laces, you do feel super locked in. The fit was pretty much perfect on the forefoot and midfoot and the only minor problem with the fit would probably be the heel and I don't think it's because there was anything wrong with the sculpting of the shoe but that heel counter is so massive and it goes up so high that it really doesn't move well with your foot when you start walking, running, and jumping. So what you essentially have is a perfect fit from the midfoot and forefoot with a little bit of heel slippage here at the back. So my quick recommendation would be that if you have a narrow foot or a normal width foot, then you should definitely go through to size. Then if you are a wide footer, I would recommend you going up half a size. But there is a chance that you could go through to size because, you know, aside from this massive heel counter at the back with this rubber, the other materials are pretty soft. Then for the aesthetic details, you do have that black outsole. And then here on the midfoot, you do have that injected phylon that is this sort of metallic gray. Then here on the heel, you do have this cutout in the rubber that exposes this red injected phylon. On that red injected phylon, you do have a jump man as well as 217, which is Jordan's birthday. Then here on the midsole, once again, you have that metallic gray injected phylon that comes up quite a bit and you can also see those lines that's for you know additional jet plane inspired aesthetics then for the rest of the shoe it is predominantly black so you have black on the rubber that comes up here at the forefoot and the heel black on that leather rand black on that woven textile black on that inner sleeve and black on that massive rubber heel counter then you do have some red accents on the shoe so you have this really tiny jump man here at the base of the lacing then you have another red jump man here at the lip of the inner boot which is on this patch that has the these white pinstripes. Then here at the heel you do have this plastic strip that has the number 23 which is Jordan's number, the number 6 which is how many championships he won, and 15 for the Jordan 15. Then for the last aesthetic detail you do have these metal aglets that have a small jump man on them as well. Then for the overall aesthetics, this is definitely one jarring shoe and has always been referred to as the red-headed stepchild of the Jordan signature line. The jet plane inspired design was definitely an interesting choice and they really went all out with it especially with this stealth colorway because it is all black with some metallic gray here at the bottom and then you even have that kevlar style woven textile as well as this lip here on the inner boot which is supposed to make it look a little bit more aerodynamic but in my opinion instead of making it look more sleek it actually just makes the shoe look very silly in my opinion so i'm not gonna lie i'm gonna have to side with the majority on this and proclaim these as the ugliest jordan sneakers in the whole signature line it definitely is just a lot to overcome from the weird shape as well as that super narrow throat here at the lacing that absolutely gigantic rubber heel count and this lip that's just you know it just why <laughs> but you know there are some people that really just love this shoe so you know I guess there is someone for every shoe then for this particular colorway I think that this is actually the best colorway of the Jordan 15 and maybe it's because it's all black which means that everything kind of ties in together and those aesthetic details that I don't really like are pretty subdued when it's all black so you know this is one of the rare shoes that I might even have a hard time trying to wear on court because I mean just look at it it's just it's very very strange but of course that is just my opinion so please sound off in the comment section down below what you think of the jordan 15s do you think that they're the ugliest jordan signature shoe ever do you think it's just fine or do you actually love these then for the price this jordan 15 stealth retroed in 2017 and it retailed for 190 dollars that will roughly convert to around 9445 pesos so in these released back in 2017 it was in the same price range as most jordan retros However, of course, you won't find these at any retailers currently, so I was able to get mine on the resale market. As I said, this is definitely one of the least popular Air Jordans, which is why even though these did retail for over 9,000 pesos, I was able to get them for 5,500 pesos or 110 US dollars. So for the price that I got these, these do feel like it's a good buy. Because for one, you do have some good herringbone traction, and then you have some good cushion with that injected phylon, and that forefoot and heel zoom air. You also have nice and soft materials, and a good fit from the midfoot to the forefoot. And the only real downsides that I can see performance-wise is the heel slippage because of this massive heel counter, and the lack of ventilation on the shoe. However, it still is a pretty jarring shoe aesthetically, so even though I do feel like it's worth it at the price I got them for, I know that there are some people that I couldn't pay to wear this shoe. So I guess the Jordan 15 Retro is really more reserved for Jordan enthusiasts and Jordan collectors because the ordinary person will definitely have a hard time appreciating these shoes. 
So there you have it guys, that concludes episode 15 of the Jordan Hunt featuring the Air Jordan 15 Stealth. If you liked the video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Then if you have any comments, questions, or any suggestions for any future videos, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below as well. Then also please sound off in the comment section down below if you would wear this on court or if you'd wear these casually. Then if you haven't already yet, please make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications. It would help us out a lot here at Sneaks and Ball PH.